Good afternoon, everybody. Today is a gorgeous day. Uh, I am really thrilled to be here with uh, so many of our partners in the criminal justice system. I want to welcome all the council members who are with us today. Uh, of course, our juvenile judges are with us, um, represented by uh, Justice Candace Bates Anderson, uh, Tammy Stewart, Desiree Cook Calvin, Mark Doherty, uh, and uh, Judge Ernestine Gray. Uh, our DA is with us today. Our sheriff is with us today. Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, Danny Engelberg with the Public Defenders, who's Chief of Trials. Uh, Mike Womack on behalf of FEMA is with us today. Josh Perry, Executive Director of the Juvenile Justice Project. Glenn Holt, who is the Superintendent of the Youth Study Center. Uh, and of course, Cedric Grant and his entire team, who um, not only is serving as Executive Director of the Surgeon Water Board, but also uh, the Deputy Mayor for Facilities Infrastructure uh, and Community Development. Um, our team over the past six years has cut the ribbon on a lot of projects. Um, but this is one of the ones uh, <coughs> that I am most proud of. Um, when I had the great pleasure of serving as Lieutenant Governor, I was head of the Juvenile Justice Implementation Commission. And many of us set our shoulder to the wheel to transform the juvenile justice system um, from what it was to what it could be. Uh, and when Katrina hit, uh, we were in a fight with FEMA, and I think, Mike, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, FEMA wanted to reimburse the city uh, about $6 million for the juvenile justice system. And everybody standing around you got together and created horizontal, horizontal and vertical communication between the federal, state, and local government authorities and said that we wanted to build a state-of-the-art center. We wanted wraparound services. We wanted to make sure that we could become the model for the rest of the country. Um, and here we sit today uh, in this beautiful facility. This facility and the juvenile justice system uh, was under consent decree. Uh, when we came into office, we worked through that with the Justice Department. We came out of consent decree. Uh, and collectively, uh, we not only got FEMA to reimburse us for $8 million, but I think the total cost of this facility is somewhere uh, in the neighborhood of 47 million dollars. You have now a state-of-the-art juvenile justice system that I think is second to none that is engaging in best practices. Um, it's not just a place for the courthouses and judges I trust that uh, you enjoy your new quarters um, and you have uh, constituents that are joining with you, uh, young families that um, are enjoying the new spaces as well, but you also have Offices for juvenile related services for the DA and the public defender, dedicated space for child in need of care, uh, and spaces to accommodate outside counsel. This is a $47 million project. It's 59,000 square feet, uh, and it is in the middle of a neighborhood that right now is being completely and totally reconstructed. Um, so, years ago, the treatment for juveniles that uh, was sentenced to this facility was really harsh. But as I said to you, um, it has been completely changed. And I trust that if you have a chance to tour the facility, uh, you will enjoy it as well. We will also begin an expansion uh, in this particular facility to accommodate uh, space for 17, for those under 18 years old. Uh, as I said, this is a wraparound service facility. Um, it is part of the NOLA for Life plan of prevention. This is one of the ways that you reduce crime is to make sure that the young men and women that are here are getting educational opportunities. We have cognitive behavioral therapy uh, that is being applied in this facility. And everybody, the whole system is working together under one roof. So to all of the folks on the prosecution side, the defense side, of course, to the judges, uh, to Glenn Holt, who oversees the Youth Study Center, uh, I want to thank all of you for partnering. And of course, I want to thank the city council for giving us the tools that are necessary uh, to get this done. Um, before I call up other speakers, I do also want to point out to you uh, that this entire neighborhood is being reconstructed. Four blocks uh, to my right is Columbia Park, used to be known as the St. Bernard Housing Project. Um, it is one of the best state-of-the-art uh, facilities uh, for mixed-use housing in the city of New Orleans. Uh, there is also an early childhood education center, which is second to none in the United States of America. Uh, right over that uh, hill is McDonough 35, 
Uh, that is a brand new state-of-the-art learning center uh, for our high school students. Uh, of course, to our left is City Park. There is 120 to $140 million of renovations in the state-of-the-art park that is about as large as any urban park in America, uh, Central Park included. Um, and now, right across the street, uh, you have uh, this brand new youth study center. Connecting the two things is a major construction on the Wisner overpass. Uh, that is going to be another state-of-the-art transportation facility. So as I said, when we were rebuilding New Orleans, we didn't build it back like it was. We built it back the way it should have always been. And we didn't just build back a thing. We built back a place. And it wasn't just about the physical structure, but it was about the things that you put in it. And so now we have all of these new entities in this particular neighborhood tied together by a $141 million national disaster resilience grant, which is focused in this area so that we have learned to live with water uh, rather than against it. And so uh, I'm really pleased to be here because this particular building um, is a perfect sign of hope for what it is that we had all hoped to achieve. We thought that we could do it. We got together. Uh, we all conceptualized what it could be, and it actually has come into reality. And now, um, it's what we do with it uh, that matters. So I thank all of you for being here uh, today. Everybody that's had anything, and there are too many people to call out individually, but as I said, nothing like this can happen without a huge amount of interaction on the federal, state, local levels, our not-for-profits, our faith-based community, all of the folks that are working in the judicial system, the executive branch, this was all hands in, uh, and what came out was really, really beautiful. So uh, what I'd like to do is ask each of the council members to make a comment and then have um, Judge uh, Bates Anderson come up on behalf of the court. And then if you guys would just follow the list after that, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, the council members. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you all for attending today. This this building represents uh, a change uh, of the reverse. Uh, for t far too long, uh, investments have lagged in the juvenile justice system. Uh, but we have a group of people here standing today that uh, want to make it right and know how to make it right uh, because this has been years uh, of planning. Uh, just last week, uh, the HUD department announced uh, re-entry. And that's what this building is supposed to represent, a beginning for our youth to come back out into society. Uh, continued investments and social services and programs to make their lives better when they're uh, released uh, from uh, a building that's just not supposed to be housing. Uh, but one of the greatest things I'm, I'm so proud about is that you have all of uh, the system pretty much under one roof. Uh, and you're going to hear from uh, our ju juvenile judiciary in a little bit. Uh, but the city of New Orleans continues to make the investments. Uh, the mayor mentioned about the resiliency grant. Uh, yes, Willie Hall Playground, in addition to what he had mentioned, is coming back across the street. And I want to thank Reverend Davis in the community of Potter Land for their uh, continued advocacy uh, in working with us uh, through that. Uh, but today you see a significant investment of uh, what the partnerships can really do for our community in addressing uh, the, uh, the, the lack of investments. Uh, we're putting more and we're gonna continue to put more. So thank you very much, Council Member uh, Gidry. Thank you, um, and it's just wonderful to be here today. Uh, when I think back to 2010, the mayor's people would come to me and say, we've, we've found another possible site for the Juvenile Justice Center. We found another possible site. We must have looked at over a dozen sites. And they would bring them to the, my office and have aerial views, you know. And we, we, we did this for a few months, and then we just looked at each other and said, there's only really one great site and this is it. It was where it was before, this is it. And I, I, you just, you know, you think about the bayou and be able to contemplate, uh, young people being able to contemplate their future. Um, you think about they're looking over across at that high school and being able to contemplate what their future should be. Uh, when the Willie Hall Playground gets back up, and uh, that's, that's been something that we've worked for for years, um, then that also will be a good element of this. So I'm really, really 
pl proud and pleased to be uh, still here to, to see this come to fruition. And the idea of having the attorneys for the children have offices right here where the children are, um, to me, is also uh, very important. And now we're working so hard to make sure that our young people are kept in a facility, if they have to be kept in a facility pretrial, that they're being kept in a facility where the staff is trained to deal with young people. And that would be this youth study center and the addition that we're gonna be building uh, for other juveniles. So it's very, very exciting to be a part of this. And, and I know the judges are happy to finally be here <laughs> and hopefully uh, are finding the space very, uh, very good for them. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, this is wonderful to be here today. It's um, important to me personally and as a member of the City Council that we provide every opportunity for our youth to be successful. Um, this is not only a beautiful building, a structure, but it's a wonderful place where we can see um, opportunities for young people to transform their lives. Unfortunately, sometimes people get in trouble and they have issues, but it is incumbent upon us to stand up as a city and to make sure that we provide resources for them to do better. Um, I'm so happy to see that we have so many of the wraparound services and the support, education, um, social services um, that are going to take part in this. So just thanks to all of the partners um, who supported this. And again, certainly thank you to our mayor, um, the judges, and the administrative staff of Juvenile Court for their support and their hard work in getting this done for our young people. I claim a special status here today. Uh, I will bet you I've unloaded more boxes in this building uh, than anyone else. Uh, I happen to be, aside from being the city councilman in District E, I'm the husband of uh, Ernestine Gray, who has been, I think she is the longest serving judge in the state of Louisiana. She's been a juvenile judge for 32 years, and she's not here today, but uh, trust me, uh, she's overjoyed about her facilities and she can see the bayou from her office. Um, but the most important thing about this building is the message we send to the kids and the families that come here, that we think they're important, we think they're valuable, and that we think uh, their real future is um, as citizens, productive citizens in this society. Uh, the, 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 the chief judge, um, Candace Anderson is going to come up next, um, and we're all overjoyed about this. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. I am Judge Candace Anderson, and first I would like to thank the mayor as well as the members of the city council uh, for making this a possibility. But most importantly, I must thank the staff and the crew and everybody who is involved with juvenile court. Uh, this is a new day for us. This is a beautiful building. Uh, we all believe in giving our kids an opportunity and a second chance, and this is the home of second chances. They come to a facility where their lawyers are present. They come to a, a facility where the district attorney is here. They come to a facility where social workers, CASA, IWES, every single person that we could fit and that the mayor allowed us to move in, we have asked to come and take space in this building. Because if we don't start wrapping ourselves around the youth of the city of New Orleans, they will continue to come in and have to unfortunately go over to Mr. Holt's side. We're trying to stop that process and we're trying to show them that we have services, we have educational liaisons, we have ODAP workers, we have the GROW program, we have every program that we can provide to give them another opportunity. We have drug court, we have the judges, we have the DA, we have the defense lawyers, we have social workers, we have school teachers, we have the clerk's office, and we even have suppers that you can purchase if you're hungry. We are trying to make a difference here. We are trying to show that you all can do anything that is possible. Who would have thought several years ago that we would be here today thanking everyone for the opportunity to move into the juvenile justice building? 
Who would have thought that we would have been so happy to leave Civil District Court with its cobwebs and other things that we left in place that we will leave unsaid and to be able to come to this facility? Everybody here stepped outside of their scope. They picked up a box, they moved a chair, they moved a water fountain, they did whatever they could do to make this possible. And we are doing this because we believe in our youth. We believe in what our city can offer. We believe that we no longer have to be the number one place that has children that are detained. That we no longer have to be the number one place where children are not receiving their education. We no longer have to be the number one place where children are addicted to drugs and not receiving the help that they need. And we are no longer the place that not, will not assess some of the needs that these kids have that may deal with psychological and social. We are showing them that we have a place where you can come under one roof and you can speak to a judge, you can speak to your lawyer, you can speak to a social worker, and you can even figure out how to get yourself back in school. So all together, we are a family. Everyone you see here, all of our staff, everybody say hello. They have all made this possible. They are all so pleased and so fortunate and so blessed to be here. This is a new era and we are so proud and so honored to be a part of it. Thank you all for your time and thank you all for believing in us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for making this building possible. Thank you, the City Council, for listening to our repeated demands and our begging and our requests and everybody who has come together and worked towards this future. Because it's a new day in the city of New Orleans and we are giving our children a second chance and another opportunity to be heard. Thank you. And next we will have our dear Mr. Canadero. Pitch. Thank you very much. You know, I remember uh, several years ago, right after I was elected, I remember attending a meeting where we discussed the building of this new juvenile courthouse, this youth study center. And uh, I have to say at that time, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not that project would ever get off the ground. And they were saying, we talk and talk and talk, but we actually never accomplished a whole lot. Well, today we see that uh, a lot of that talk has come to fruition. And I think a large part of the thanks and the congratulations, certainly we, we appreciate the mayor and the council for the work that they have done. But I can tell you at some of those meetings, the judges, not all of them who are here today, but some of the judges, their predecessors, were fighting very, very hard to make this happen for the youthful offenders of our community. You know, I like to think of this building as what we would call an opportunity center because we find, unfortunately, in the city of New Orleans that people are going to make mistakes during the course of their life. And they're going to make mistakes when they are sometimes very young. But it would be certainly foolish for us to throw those lives away. Just because someone makes a, a mistake during the course of, the, of their life, that does not mean that their life is a mistake. And I'd like to think of this as the Opportunity Center, which gives that youthful offender an opportunity to get an education, to stay off the drugs, to do something constructive and productive with his life so he does not find himself graduating to the Tulane and Broad Complex where unfortunately we see so many of our youth there today. So I'm very, very proud to be a part of this. I know my assistants are very happy to be here. Uh, they certainly like the surroundings also, Judge, a whole lot better than they did on Poydras and Loyola. They're very excited about it. We look forward to working with you and to make this a success and make a difference in our community. So thank you all very much. Next person, Josh Perry. We're really grateful and excited to be here today, grateful to the administration, to the mayor for his leadership, to Capital Projects, to Bob Vallejo to his, for his extraordinary long suffering in dealing with all of us, to the judges, to the city council, to all stakeholders in the justice system. This is an impressive symbol of justice in New Orleans. It is just bricks and mortar. It's just a symbol until we invest it with meaning through our everyday actions. When the children who come to this building every day meet every one of them with fairness, are treated every one of them with dignity, are accorded every one of them opportunity, it will be a justice center, a center of justice for all the children of New Orleans. So this is a wonderful start, but it's incumbent on all of us to make it real and make it meaningful through our actions every day. The irony of an extraordinary building like this is that nobody here ever wants a child to see the inside of it, if that's at all possible. And so 
as we commit ourselves to doing justice in this building, it's critically important also that we redouble our commitment to making sure that as few children as possible see the inside of this building and that we recognize, we recognize that children are not raised at their best, are not raised in courts, but are raised in families and in communities. And that our investment in this building is exceeded many times over by our investment in the vulnerable children and families that make up New Orleans. And that's when we'll see not just a brick and mortar justice center, but our city be a place of justice for all of its people. And that's, I think, the commitment that we all make and renew today. Next up, uh, Sheriff Marlon Gusman. Thank you, Mayor, judges, and district attorney, everybody, the council members. You know, this has been a long time coming. And uh, just wanted to echo what I heard about how it's so important that we came back better and stronger. You know, we could have just repaired and replaced what we had here, uh, but that's the message is that we can do a whole lot better in this community. This is one example of that. Uh, now, this is a facility where uh, they can really get some good positive results. Uh, I had an opportunity uh, to rekindle uh, our partnership that we have with the Youth Study Center, uh, talking with Mr. Holt, and there's a whole lot more potential here. There's a whole lot more good things that can happen here. I'm excited about it, and I think everybody should be in this community. Thanks. Mr. Cedric Grant. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This has been a long journey. As Councilmember Guidry said, the mayor told me to go look for sites. We gave him 14. <laughs> we came back to, to this place. Um, and it is a place. <laughs> um, what I want to share with you is, is the uniqueness of where, where you're at the juvenile justice complex. Um, as you know, know, if you know New Orleans, there's no hills here. We have hills in rolling uh, terrain here. You're in the midst of <laughs> you're in the middle of green infrastructure, folks. <laughs> this place is designed to hold water and to to to, to manage water. And as the mayor indicated, live with water as we we are trying to do in the future. So it is really futuristic in that sense as well as providing the state of the art facilities that we have. It's also a place where the ultimate in partnership occur. Everybody came to the table here. So mayor, if you remember, this used to be handled property. We got Hanno to come in and, and donate the property. We got DEQ to give us some money to move soil. We got uh, the du Department of Justice to, to work with us on, on the building. Every partner, state, federal, and local, participated in order to get what you see here. And it's the only way we get places like this in New Orleans now. Um, we're not finished. I'm glad they stopped pile driving, but to your left, the New Wisner Bridge, $22 million. That'll be finished next year. Um, as the councilman indicated, we're going to start on Willie Hall and high performance uh, football field, high performance by meaning more stormwater detention right across the hill at, at McDonald 35. And we'll be doing street improvements in the community here in the summer. Uh, so by the time kids come back to school, it'll be a much better place. And we're going to kick off our $147 million HUD disaster resilience in Gentilly, where we will begin but not end the, the, our journey with water. Between that and another $80 million that we'll invest in this community over the next two years, you will see a dramatic change in how we, we live with water, how we create facilities such as this. All the buildings that you've been seeing are just as beautiful as this. We don't, we don't do them anyway with, with, to the best that we possibly can with, with the state-of-the-art architecture. So I welcome you to the your study center. And my, my partner, Mike Womack, who I, from FEMA, who I could not have done this Thank you. It, it has nothing to do with the $31 million the FEMA money that's in this facility, I'm sure. You know, I was, I was very proud here as, as the mayor was listing all of these facilities that, that have been built here. You left one off, Mayor. Lafon up on uh, St. Bernard is just about to open up there. So uh, it, it is a source of great pride to be able to represent the, the employees that made this happen, not only from FEMA, but also the Governor's Office of Homeland Security and uh, Emergency Preparedness. We're very proud of all of these facilities around here, this one in particular, because of everything it means to the community. 
look forward to uh, a few more of these ribbon cuttings over the next few months and years then. Thank you for having us. And it'll be the pastor, Lionel Davis, will have our pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, to all of the city officials, the judges, FEMA, the state, and those that are represented here on today. Uh, I'm, I'm a product of this community. Uh, as old as the juvenile justice, the then youth study center was, I am. So for me, this community holds a lot of distinct honors for me, as well as some terrible memories. But I came to speak on behalf of the community. One thing happened at this particular facility that must be understood, is that with the mayor's office, the council, and other representatives, the community came together to voice the concern of not moving this facility because these are our children. No matter where you remove them to, they'll still have to go somewhere. So it's just as simple to keep them in this area. I want to thank the mayor for not yielding to any other thoughts because what happened was, when the mayor and the mayor's office of neighborhood engagement, our community came together to host meetings, a series of meetings on how to develop this particular project so that the community didn't feel as though it was just sitting on a prison beside a school. That's why you have the hills, the rest of the walls. So when you come here, you don't see a facility that looks like a prison. It looks like something that you would want to come into, welcoming those that came around. With the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Engagement, we were able to sit down and bring in 120 members of our community, men and women who needed jobs. And through the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Engagement, along with Job One, we were able to get all of those folks listed on top of the pile. With an immediate response, Mr. Mayor, in that, we developed a plan to meet quarterly or monthly through Mr. Ray Bowling and others at Job One to ensure that the Section 3 part of hiring would be a very prominent part of our conversation with regard to this project. Not only did we get the job training opportunity for those residents of our community, but many of them were placed on other job sites like the 35 Project because of what we got through Job One, because of what we got because of community engagement. Listen to me good, this project did not leave the community out. It kept the community at heart. And I'm here today to say that to all of you, we are grateful for this facility and this time. But there's a coin phrase I want to leave you with, that we people can go further than they think when they go together. Thank you for this opportunity. All right, everybody, thank you all so much. This is, this is what winning looks like. You hear me talk a lot about the new New Orleans way when everybody comes to the table. Mike Womack represents President Obama uh, and his administration through the Department of Homeland Security from FEMA all the way down to the ground. And the pastor uh, just told you that the community was involved. So the entire country, from where we're standing now all the way up to the White House, uh, both, both horizontally and laterally, everybody was engaged in this project. And this is what winning looks like. It is a beautiful facility. It is spectacularly better than what we had before. It completely demands collaboration. It folds all the way into rebuilding neighborhoods and it does it in a way so that we can actually live with water and stay dry. And this is what it looks like when we work together. So I thank all of you for coming. Uh, now the hard work begins. Uh, we're handing it over to you guys. Treat it with kid gloves, love it, care for it. It's gotta last a long, long time. Um, and what you do in the building is more important uh, than the building itself. And it's essentially about saving our children uh, and then finally about making the streets of the city of New Orleans a place of peace uh, rather than a place of violence. So I commend you for the work that all of you have done in your lives. Uh, and I thank you for the sacrifice that you're gonna make to save the kids and to save the city. Uh, so thank you very much. We